Okay, all set. We have a meeting to order at 7 p.m. Uh, public comment. Public comment. Cohasset Elder Fields Board of Directors, Associate Member Appointment. Good evening. Good evening. Tana Carlson, 18 Old Coach Road. Um, I have something I'd like to read. You have a copy of it there. The Board Development Committee, in accordance with the bylaws of Cohasset Council on Elder Affairs, Article 3, submits the following recommendation recommendation for an open seat on the Board of Directors for Elder Affairs. One, vacancy for member director voting. This appointment to fill a term vacated by a former member. Uh, candidate Harry St. Ange to move from associate member, which is a non-voting position, to move there. And then two, vacancy for associate member, non-voting, candidate Kathy Nothnagel to fill position vacated by Harry St. Ange. The above recommendations are put forth uh, for a vote by the Board of uh, Directors of Elder Affairs and further submitted to the Cohasset Board of Selectmen for appointment. Once approved, the candidates must be sworn in by town clerk, uh, respectfully submitted to Tana Carlson. And I believe you have Kathy's resume. She's yes, new. we do. Uh, yeah. Harry St. Ange, we just went through this with him uh, yeah. a few months ago, so you know that too. So that's all I have. Thank you. I'm Well, thanks for your willingness to serve. Um, do we have a motion? So moved. Uh, for uh, you do them both at the same time? Or? Okay. I, I, I just wanted to say because I'm late. Can we second it? Okay. What was your motion? Do them both or one yes, at a time? Do both. both. Okay. Do we have yeah. a second? Okay. okay. Go ahead. Okay. I liaison to the Housing Authority of Happy as the chair. And I think that this is really a great um, meeting together of needs for uh, the Cohasset seniors, and it's really great to to see the two organizations working so closely together. And that was part of our um, uh, our thinking when we realized, regretfully, that we had an opening. We thought, what do we really need? And I talked to Kathy, and, and independently, we had spoke about it at the board. And the thing is that because we serve our, at least our constituencies overlap to a great degree, there should be more of um, interaction, and this is perfect. You know, we yeah. go right, yeah. <laughs> right to the top. Right to the top. <laughs> and, uh, so as you know, Taffy has been the governor's <laughs> appointee to this position for many years. Not anymore. Oh, 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 no, oh no, no, ex no, no, governor's no, no, appointee. But <laughs> um, anyway, and she's well versed in all the elder issues as well as specific here to Cohasset. So I think it's a perfect blend at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five to zero. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you both. Thank you. And the Okay, next is the Town History Committee Sunset and Merge with the Cohasset Historical Commission. Jackie? How are you tonight? Very well, how are you? Good. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Jackie. You have something good for all of you. This is the uh, most recent publication of the, commi the uh, Committee on Town History. It's the origins of Cohasset. And, um, it's so apropos at this time because the Historical Commission is preparing a uh, celebration of uh, the 400th anniversary of the landing of Captain John Smith in Cohasset. And the second half of this book is about the Conahasset Indians whom he encountered here. Well, that's great. And uh, they, their predecessors, too. There's a long history of Native American occupation in this area. And the first half is on the geologic formation of Cohasset. Mm -hmm. So I hope that uh, you'll enjoy this. Oh, thank you. Can you say marine? Mm -hmm. Thank you so marine. much. Yeah, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you, Jackie. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Now, will we able to find sources on the uh, Native American population? Uh, there's a, I the have a big bibliography in the oh, back. I found, a lot, I found this is as much information as I could find. Mm. Thank, thank you very so much, much for oh. autographing. Oh. That's very nice. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I know oh, you've done a lot of work, <laughs> uh, as you have for all of them. It's been a, a the wonderful yeah. committee. And uh, 
we were established in 1996 by the Historical Commission to produce the third narrative history of Cohasset. Mm -hmm. And it evolved into uh, that plus two anthologies of articles written about Cohasset by various people that I found when I was doing my research for the narrative history. And I was afraid that these would just disappear because some, some of them I, I found by going to the Situate Library looking at microfilms of old Situate heralds. I mean, who would ever think of going there? So anyway, we put together two anthologies. There are too many for just one. And um, after that, um, it occurred to me that Cohasset didn't have a guidebook, so we did a historical guidebook exploring historic Cohasset. And then the, the last book was this, and this um, is an update to Bigelow, who published his book in 1898 and wrote a lot of, he's very interested in the geology of Cohasset, but of course he didn't know anything about plate tectonics, and there's so much more that we know now. So I, with some help from a, a professional, I was able to put something together that would give you kind of a concise idea of how the, um, the land was formed beginning 600 million years ago. And then, <laughs> and then the, uh, Bigelow also wrote about the Indians, but he didn't write very much about their predecessors. You might not have known how, how many um, bands have passed through here beginning perhaps 8,000 years ago and then what happened to the native peoples in this area after King Philip's War. Mm -hmm. So that's in here too. What about the glaciers? Did you the gla oh, there's a, a lot about, about the glaciers. glaciers. He, he covered that quite well, but mm -hmm. you know, I, I included that, I too. that yeah. uh, so, yeah. Did you find anything more detail on the glaciers? No, not really, not mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. um, just mo the new part is, is the plate tectonics and, yeah, and how written this the down. continental drift from the South Pole. Actually, our granite began in the South mm -hmm. Pole and migrated to where we are now. It's, just, it's, it's, a, fasc like it's a fascinating story, I think. Yeah. But anyway. However, um, having said that, it, it seems that it is time for the Committee on Town History to sunset. Um, it's, it's sad. We've lost, actually, many of our members, too, which is... Um, mm -hmm beginning with Clark Chatterton in 2000, and uh, Lou Eaton, um, Hubert Vanderloo, mm -hmm. um, Greg Pearson, Hal Coffin, and most recently Jim Hamilton. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's, that's a, a, a heavy loss, really. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought, and the members that I met with uh, to sunset our committee, thought it would be best to merge our functions with the historical commission because there's a, an inventory of history books to manage. Uh, the Saber Salt, the second anthology of history, there are not too many left. We'd like to reprint those at some point. Um, we could do more marketing of the books. And with actually with the uh, historical commission, there are opportunities for Publications probably more linked to the school, something maybe for the for the kids. On the, uh, well, for example, I spoke to a fifth grade <coughs> teacher who was interested, for some reason, on the um, impact of geography on the colonial economy of Cohasset. Um, so I mean, it's possibly we could do that. Um, the historical commission is interested in partnering with. For example, the Central Cemetery Association and preserving some of the very old slates that are beginning to deteriorate. And I thought it'd be good to maybe publish a booklet showing um, rubbings of the old slates so that you get an idea of the images on them and the epitaphs. Um, so anyway, I thought it would be, and the Historical Commission established the, the Committee on Town History, so it seems very mm -hmm. logical mm -hmm. that um, they take That makes a lot of sense, and now the committee is getting filled, and we can add more, more members as associates. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, that's, that's about it. So I ask that you sunset us and merge us with uh, the Historical Commission. Okay. Thank you.
okay, discussion? I, I just, just had sort of a mechanical question yeah. in terms of, okay. you know, are there any restrictions to the size of the Historical Commission Board? Seven, I well, I don't mean by merge. I don't yeah. mean all of our members going there. Okay. Um, the functionality. Yeah, maybe the functionality. The functionality. Yeah. Actually, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah it okay. was just the functions of the of the uh, committee on town history, not the people. Who's yeah. left on on your committee? There's a uh, Kim Alenian, who's very active in the Art Center. Yeah. Um, Julia Gleason, Ann Pompeo. Um, Nancy Garrison, who isn't very well, and um, near on there. Yeah. Oh, Margot Cheel, okay. and Ernie Grassi. Yeah. That's a great committee. Yeah. Be it, it was a very good committee. Yeah. Be before the board takes action on it, I, I have to tell you that I am I, I, I'm just staggered by the amount of work and energy that collectively you put together for this over I don't even know how many years. Well, it was started in 1996. I came on board in 98. I, I say that, but I, when I, I, I'm not talking about the years of work that go, uh, go into this as the committee alone, but the, the many years that come before that, both with just a general interest and a, uh, a native passion that produce something as, uh, you know, as, as profound as this book. I say profound from the perspective that, for me, I moved here and I learned to uh, I learned to enjoy this place and to, to enjoy what it had become and how the land formed its people. And from that perspective alone, I really uh, I have to say that personally, I appreciate everything you've done collectively and on your own. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, it's quite an accomplishment, all the writing that you've done personally. Mm -hmm. It was fun. I really, it was a labor of love. I really enjoyed it. And I also want to say I have all your books. Thank you. <laughs> not yet. She's not done. Well, except, that's 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 except, except, except the ones that haven't charged. I really appreciate it. My children, some of them I've given to the children. I've given them uh, Bigelow and some of them. Uh, and uh, I will probably at Christmas, it's a good one. Well, we used to like to say that Cohasset has the most comprehensive history of any town in New England and perhaps of the nation. Well, so he's, I think he's, he's yeah. not far from yeah. the country. I, I think, think he, he is. He may be correct. Yeah. 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 yeah, because for the, when you think of all the committees and all the different things we have here, we're a microcosm of a larger uh, uh, town, because we're a very small town and yet we're organized for something that is a couple of hundred thousand people, I think. <laughs> Over well, <laughs> the history books in other areas, because sometimes I find them, they, they, there are as many as comprehensive as we and, have. And this follows it from That's right. the Ice Age and, and earlier, mm -hmm. actually not 600 million years ago, <laughs> to, to the um, almost the 21st century. Now, Peter Dillon we has given that? several lectures mm -hmm. on the topography. Yes. Now, that would be something also to put into another a booklet, that's yes, right. I, I, I can so. see booklets. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure about yeah, books anymore, yeah. kind of on the yeah. depths there, yeah. but booklets certainly. Martha, she's trying to sunset the committee. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, I'm well, thinking like <laughs> animation well, classes <laughs> up at the high school and yeah. developing, you know, yeah, I asterisks she, she, she on, you know? is a member of the historical commission. I know, but she's trying to sunset this committee. <laughs> no, well, no. Martha just wants to keep her busy that's and engaged, yeah, yeah. Yeah. rightly yeah. so. That's right. Thank you very much. So, uh, Mr. Chairman. So we're, we're sunsetting the town history committee, right. but we're not merging it any longer. It's, it's, the, it's this merging the functions, the functions. I think. Merging the functions. Yeah, what we can do is look at the charge on both right. and see just what we need to do exactly. So I think tonight okay. we can sunset the committee okay. and then investigate the charges and see what we need to add to okay. historical. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, would you want to do that on an as of date? Oh, uh, the sunset? Uh, yes. Give, it, give you time to look at the charges. Uh, well, you can. I, I don't care. I'm, you know, you um, can sunset. You can sunset it, mm -hmm. and then, if and you then want. Mm -hmm. as a and separate then. vote, add the charges. Yeah. You can do that. Mm -hmm. and she would like it. It's her reasoning, and she has the knowledge that it's we really, have. It. I, I'm, my concern is that the inventory has to be managed, mm -hmm. and right now I'm doing that. Um, mm -hmm. Jim passed it on to me when he, he was ill. And I'm just concerned that you know, when I go, that unless there's a, 
a standing <laughs> committee that is responsible for that. Mm -hmm. um, no, no yeah. one will know who okay. to go to or what Then to we do. should do it now. Then we should do that. Yeah, maybe, Jackie, you could uh, give Chris a brief description of what this managing the inventory is so we can include that in our vote when oh, we get okay, ready. Okay, sure. Uh, we'll do that another night, but tonight we can sunset the committee okay, and, and I'll work just on that. Give yeah. him a, oh, it, it's fairly simple. Yeah. yeah. I, I will so, do that. Sounds good. Okay. Everybody okay with that? That sounds great. Mm -hmm. Okay, do we have a motion mm -hmm. to sunset the committee? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? I'm reluctant to vote on this. It's oh. done such a great <laughs> job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, you, Thank you. And I'll be looking forward to the book. <laughs> okay. Water budget. Nobody here. Do we need to? Uh, is anybody going to come in? I don't know. No, I, I don't think. So. I, I'm not. I don't think so. I did circulate what I was provided. Yeah. And I was asked a couple of questions, and I did speak with Brenda today over at the other district, um, and um, one of them had to do with the question of uh, a couple of lines that, and let me answer them, because uh, uh, I had spoken with, uh, with Karen earlier, and I think if she asked the question, I'm sure others thought the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, on the sludge removal, uh, which is Time, it's the one, two, three, it's the fourth line yep. down on expenses. Mm -hmm. And I was there the other day, so I saw this. They, they actually, uh, it's the manganese and other stuff that comes out of the water. It comes into a big bag, it fills up, and every two years they take it away, which is the reason that it's $100,000 in this year and it will go down to 50000 next year. That's one of the reasons. <coughs> Just because the bag has to be taken away every, roughly every other year. Um, now, um, so in, in 15, it won't have to be taken away, and in 16, it will again. Um, it's a byproduct of the yeah 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 it's, it's not like, right yeah when it's, I was up there I was in a it's field, organic they were, they were spreading it out to dry out yeah what they've done now they have two it um, looks like great stuff but I guess it isn't so. no it's not it's not toxic per se <laughs> it looks uh, like really good compost you know? yeah no it's a little yeah it's, it's again it's not I was told it's not grow your cucumbers in there <laughs> um, it's um so that's one that's the reason it's down in fifteen uh, they're also going to be they're looking to develop a an additional treatment uh, or on-site facility to to, 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 to to do more of it internally and clean more of it out. Mm -hmm. I, I don't claim to claim to understand all the details of it, so that will oh, bring the cost down in future years too. Theater. Well, didn't we talk a little bit about the last time we was here? But we don't have any written well, particulars. No, was no, that's true. It was, yeah, it was yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was talking this about pre-treatment. This is yeah, that, that's effectively. Oh, this is something. This yeah, is that's a little. The, the, the sludge room is, a, is, is 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 related, I guess. But again, I don't I don't know enough about this to get too. Where does yeah, he Where does he put the sludge when he removes it? It goes. Oh, it, yeah, it goes on the side. It gets taken away to a landfill. Oh. Um, okay. so. Well, they have like a cat, like a clean harbors kind of company come in and do that. Yeah, it's kind of, I forget what it is. Yeah, it's, and this company is coming actually very soon because the bag is full. Uh, and again, like I said, it's not it's not toxic per se. It's just yeah. like you know, the organics and stuff that yeah. get. There, there must be something in there. Well, I mean, you wouldn't organics want organics. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, like it's like some type of aluminum that gets in the water and it pulls all this stuff out and collects on yeah. the bottom. That's how you put one of the steps in purifying it. When you when you pull yeah, the water out, right. you know, Fred. Yeah. Yeah. It's called being on the It's been a while. But yeah. Okay. Right. You're a water guy. Yeah. 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 Okay. Let's see. The, one, the, the, the item, and I, I bring it up again, um, uh, in the budget. As a revenue item, we have three hundred thousand dollars listed for yes. um, for the town participation in the hydrant, which of course has a substantial potential impact if that is not the amount uh, that's that's uh, remitted with regard to the end P and L on this. So I, mean, I, I, I simply want to make the point that the numbers we were looking at still project a three hundred thousand dollar number. And if that is not going to happen, then I don't think the budget's accurate. Well, I, I don't. I, I have to tell you, as of right this morning, I can't. I, I'm, I'm, I'm taking face value with three hundred thousand dollars, but I do plan to sit down with the water commission and work through both that and the indirect cost element. I recognize. That. Um, so at the end of the day, we will work this. Um, so right. at the moment, I, 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 they also have built in a, effectively. A, uh, I, 
hate to use the term surplus, but there is a little potential. There is a potential right. surplus, and that's a, that's a, that's quite all right. I mean, it's it, it, the retained earnings in in many respects have been the funding source recently for some of their capital projects, right. and that's you know again these the, 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 both utilities were designed uh, and put into place as enterprise <coughs> funds to be self-supporting as opposed to uh, having the town uh, provide any any additional support. My question is whether or not the budget itself accurately reflects the expected financial position of the utility. Well, the only the only person who could answer that, I mean, you asked that functionally, you know, Peter last week, and I believe his answer was yes. Uh, yeah, and, and I'm asking I'm asking you from the other side of the, co the coin, and, and you're, I, I understand your answer, which is that there's 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 Questions to be addressed overall. I want to make. I, I just want to be certain that we're not fooling ourselves collectively. Um, you know that, that when when uh, when, the, when the budget's put together, I want to make sure it accurately reflects, reflects what we can expect to represent the, the town again at the close of the year <coughs> next fiscal year. It would have to be adjusted. The income would have to be adjusted. If we have to make any adjustments. At a special tab meeting in October, we will. But I'm not. I'm not. As of the, there, there's going to need to be a little more time spent working. No, no, no. I, I, I recognize right. that. I, but I'm, I, you know, my, my point is that I don't want to be throw. I don't want collectively the five of us and you to throw our blinders on and no. say, oh yeah, it's three hundred thousand no, dollars. No, 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 no,
was needed. I, I, I just have a lot of questions. There, the, 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 the system maintenance will go in cycles. Okay, so they, they would they, they, for for the system to be key would be understandable and expected. The, the where I have a, a a real question on this is really it, I hate to say it, I don't I don't disbelieve the budget that's been represented by the Water Commission. However, the Water Commission has put an expectation of revenues that they cannot realistically expect to receive, which puts us right back at the place that that got us into insolvency in the first place. Right? We did the very same thing with Linden Ponds. Mm -hmm. we, we, we projected revenue that we could not expect to receive. Exactly. And I can't see going to, to a town meeting mm -hmm. and trying to voice this on the citizens, on the ratepayers. Well, at, at this stage, I think we would need to make a motion before town meeting to reduce the reflected income on the water to re accurately reflect what we have budgeted until we can go to town meeting and up it. Well, we can't even so guarantee that, that we'd up it. Yeah, it well, we can't again, guarantee not, it, but, but, but no, we can't. No, but but we can't go in with an un, with an unvalid projection. No, so we have only budgeted 247. So my point is, until we can go in and up the 247, I think town meeting needs to understand that the water revenue on the other side needs to show that to be accurate, which is your point. Well, it it, need, it needs to accurately reflect. Yeah. It. I mean, the, the larger issue is. A, a, as we pointed out in, a, over the previous years, as the town has refused to pay uh, what was legitimately adopted for a hydrant fee, okay, that's really the issue, right? And that's right. where we're at at this moment. Now, it's not, you know, Chris, lucky you, you inherited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, by the way, it's ticking. Um, <laughs> but the problem, the problem is that you know we have we have sworn to transparency, right? And we did this we, we did this through. Uh, working through the water, uh, the water department financial issues, mm. and we've done it as a town. And here we're, t we're carrying we're Rosemary's baby into the meeting, saying, yeah, yeah, just don't look at it, all right? Oh. And that doesn't make a lick of sense. So either the, the water commission has to make the representation to the town, uh, as, as you're pointing out on the floor, as an amended budget, or I, or, or there's a separate approach that we have to take, and I'm not quite sure what it is. I mean, I, I would like to see, to ask the Water Commission if they would consider revising their proposed budget to reflect the 247, which which they're still going to be okay. Yeah. But if we take the 50000 on the floor out of the town budget, it just throws everything out of whack. No, no, no. I, 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 I appreciate, and, I appreciate and I, the issues. I just don't think that... My, my, you can approve this the way it is. My, my, I bring it up because I, <coughs> well, it has been coming up. Going to, it so keeps coming you. up. It's been coming up for for three you know three different meetings now, and this is going to be actually, we, actually we've got it we've got to we've got to represent it accurately. Actually, it looks like it went to the Florida town meeting at three hundred last year, and we didn't pick it up. Because it's I, in the FY14 budget at three hundred. Well, no, no, we did. It was it, right. it, Again, did, the, yeah. the budget. Of the three hundred thousand, or the one that's in FY fourteen, even right now, the estimated revenue yeah. of three hundred and eleven thousand is made up of two hundred forty-seven thousand from the town and the other hydrant fees that they collect. Right, but their their mm -hmm. line they're item is called the budget 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 hydrant budget. charge. Can I clarify? Let me, let me explain. Yeah, please. And again, please correct me if I'm misstating this, Mary. What you're seeing on this sheet is not what's reflected in the budget that, that was presented, um, as I understand it. Is that is that, is that correct? Yeah, I didn't bring the one that you emailed right, right. me earlier, but yeah. we were looking at this earlier, by the way, and I have to tell you that we had we had t trouble tying this back to other numbers. Yeah, this is my, this is my point. Yeah, however, no, is that there's there not is that it was a big difference. <laughs> there is a joint financial management structure between yes. the commission and the town, and if we have trouble tying back the numbers, well, I'd have to say that that has to come from the communication between the two parties. Right, mm -hmm. and ultimately, if a budget's represented to us and its component parts don't match, I have to go back and ask the question, why not? Right. So, just, just I'm going to just get be oversimplifying this whole thing. But the the information that we got in our packets, the first page is FY13 budget and FY13 projected. 
Is that supposed to be FY15 or no, no, and, and isn't, no, a, just, isn't there a projected budget and then an actual? And shouldn't we be this looking at some actual? This is what I, guess I, mean, was, I, gave I didn't exactly. even receive any emails. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So as far as I'm concerned, this makes no sense because we also no, have FY13 projected. Yeah. Right. Then we have FY14 budget. We don't have any FY14 action. I don't care about FY13 right now, you know? Right. I want FY14 budget, FY14 where we're tracking action. Yeah. There's, there's it, it would be helpful if this was all consolidated so. on one well, sheet. Well, we have another page. Yeah, it's, it's almost like FY14 it was done for FY14 and not for That's what I think. Yeah. See, I don't know. I never even right. received the email, so. It's until well, late this afternoon. <laughs> Mr. The chairman, yeah. we have a, uh, FY14 uh, budget, which is different than this one, right. and it has the 247 in it. To actually right, be clear about this, week. the number that's no, actually in the warrant, oh. yeah, okay, that we were given. Yeah, which article is it? Oh, it's in the back. It's a back. It's, it's, back. it's, back. Back. it's, it's four million seven hundred two thousand two hundred two dollars. It'll be off by the indirect cost. Oh, right, 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 right. What's okay. that again? So that was those are the indirect were coming out of that. Right. 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 So that was so the indirects would come out of that. So look at let's look at the warrant. So the problem here is that right, we're going to town meeting in a week. Or well, the bottom week. lines work, right? <laughs> yes. The bottom lines work. So, um, bottom but lines they, work. But they only work if you get the two, if you get the three hundred. I think we will be fine because I think their FY fourteen revenue will come in. Yeah, but I, I project. I, 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 I don't know how we can vote on something. <laughs> no offense well, to like you, Mary. Well, like what Peter said, he 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 budget to the P and L to be zero, and that's a zero. That's what he said last week. That's what Peter said. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't recall that. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I recall him saying zero. that they, yeah. he budgeted to the expenses. He did. Yeah, you budgeted to the expenses. expenses. It's not a P and L to be zero. No, you he can't, said the P and L to be zero. You cannot carry a retained earnings if your P and L is zero. I know, but that is what he said. That's that, my my point comes back to the same thing. All right. no, if I'm we have joint it. financial management, these numbers have to be have to be worked out, accurate <laughs> and reflected. Mm -hmm. All right, and I don't see that to be the case. I I, I think. You know, Steve has correctly said we ha we had a lot of issues a number of years back because there wasn't transparency, there wasn't communication, the numbers didn't. They don't tie. They didn't tie. Thank you. And um, I I just don't feel that this is something that would be responsible of the board to approve at this point. I mean I don't I don't know how we get to within so many days of of, of town meeting. And the water department has not provided us with the information we need in order to. I, again, well, I don't it's, know a, it's not a it's not a finger what, pointing exercise. Yeah. To the, to my my observations are that it's got. I mean, if you've got joint financial management, you've got two parties that are yes. responsible. And that. But we've we've had two two parties that were responsible. We have a new party who's, who's, oh, who's not, jumping not, in I, and inheriting yeah, it. Yeah, no, no, it's not. It's not uh, this is not uh, not directed. Toward, uh, toward Chris, I'm just saying that there's two. This is this is a contiguous operation. It's not, it's not episodic, right? This doesn't happen just just at one time in the year. That's correct. It's got to be going on month by month, week by week, day by day. That's correct. Right? Because the financial function of the Water Commission doesn't take place at the Water Commission. It takes place here. That's correct. So, just let me just in terms of what's in the warrant. But the Water Commissioners are responsible for their. For their, for their budget. budget, for the budget, and assembly. for managing and for co-managing the enterprise fund. Co, co. Well, and that's and that's the part though that was was new and in the, addition. The, bo to the bottom line here is that the water department is probably going to have to reduce their budget to meet the requested 4.7 million here until we can figure out where additional revenue yeah. is going to come from. Right, and I think that, that on expenses, so right. it's going to have to come out of the expense line. To Karen's point, however, yeah, this means that you know, from our from my perspective as well, I don't think that that we can vote on approving anything until the Water Commission comes forward and says, here's how we resolve it. Or, maybe they do yeah. that on the floor. I yeah, don't know. I, I don't know. <clears throat> so, I just have a question in terms of the warrant, because that's what most people are sitting at home yeah. looking at, right? Yeah. And there's yeah. a number that says 4,702,202, right? Yeah. And that does not include the indirect costs. Because indirects are covered in the general Correct. budget. Correct. Now, indirects, according to the Water Department mm -hmm. budget, is ninety three thousand yes. dollars? Well, but it's ninety three. Well, if they're actual, they have. If you look at the actual budget they submitted last week, it's ninety three and some odd, hundred and eighty two or something. So, does do those numbers add up properly to any yes, number? Yes, yes. I, I double checked that they're. I sent the water department what their indirects were, 
and what their debt service was going to be. The rest okay. of the budget. That's in those two, yeah. right. Okay, I see. I, I think it's really important that Chris and Mary and the Water Commissioners mm -hmm. find out how this information is going to be presented for t to town meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. So that we all, the board and advisory and everybody else and the, t and the members at, at town meeting, the, the residents are all understand the same information at the same time so we can vote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I found that the numbers were strange. <coughs> well, we, I, I, I would. I, one of the things I'd like to see in the, in the in the coming years with regard to budgeting is a consistent format for each of the enterprise funds. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, You're right. That that accurately represents both historical P and L on those funds and the expected um, P and L structure that gets you to the budget for the for the enterprise itself. That would be really helpful. Just as importantly, however, as I said earlier, this has to be this has to be tied to the general budget such that when we see it, the only reason that the numbers would differ is that there is a policy disagreement uh, with respect to how the fund is operated. Otherwise, we're sitting here speculating. Yeah, making things up. And that's dead wrong. Right. My quick calculations, if, if the uh, indirects are 93,182, that the um, retained net to retained earnings is going to have to change from 46,420 to 1,923 bucks. And that would that would balance everything out. But we need somebody to get on top of this and run the numbers mm -hmm. on it and make sure we're all lined up for town meeting. Yeah. But because they do have the retained earnings down there, that can make up the difference by reducing that. Do we want a selectman to go on to that little subcommittee? Probably not a bad idea. The one that's going to work with the water <laughs> and Mary and Chris to just <laughs> kind of the subcommittee in the next couple of days? Yeah, yeah. Because we got town meeting in less than six days. I'll do it. Okay. If you need I'll volunteer. volunteer. Steve. I'll go I'll volunteer. volunteer. Okay. okay. Steve. Yes. Just make some. Thank yeah. God for telephones. Yeah, just make some sense of the numbers. Well, okay. I, I think it's manageable looking at because it, the re, net return the earnings, we can make it work at least for this until we yeah. you know we deal with the policy issue of getting that back to three hundred or um, you know maybe. It's got to. It's got to. Yeah. That's that's really where the problem. Yeah, that's running? a little bit longer term than this town. Well, actually, issue. again, it, no, I know that, that I it's know. not the only issue. No, because no, the indirect costs have not been updated, and, and Mary and I have started to work on that. But yeah. I, I wasn't comfortable with driving that forward without having met with them. Right. right. Well, it, um, my, it, so. it, my point is that the, 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 the both of these are indirect costs, one to the utility, one to the town. Yeah. Right? The, wa the hydrant fees are an indirect cost to the water mm -hmm. department that are charged to the town. Okay. All right? There's... Mary, the, the, the water department doesn't incur annual fees, but the reason you know, for just, building out the water system as it was was to provide a level of fire suppression that didn't exist in this right. town prior. Right. All right. Likewise, do they use as much as you're going to build them for, the, for, for Brian Joyce? Probably not even close. But a good chunk of the reason for, for bringing Brian in was to oversee many of the projects that have run mm -hmm. off the rails. All right. So both sides have their arguments. The fact of the matter is, from a policy standpoint, we've got a hole in the budget that make us look like fools in front of the town, and we can't have that. Uh, uh, Steve, do you want pay raise? Or do I want to pay raise? Absolutely. Stipend. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a couple of grand. That'd be nice. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All those you are get a thousand for a year. <laughs> <laughs> you got to throw the budget further out of whack okay. here. But it, no, yeah. no, I don't. No, do we need don't, anything don't else on water? Or I think no. we're all set to go for it. Okay. Next item is licensing, uh, licenses entertainment license for the Carrots House Nursery School. Okay, uh, it's for a fundraiser on May 17th from 1 to 4 p.m. 
the children's live band will play from one to four on Cohasset Con. So the event was already approved, but yeah. they, they want to add the music. Okay. So that's just an entertainment license. It's yeah. a separate what, license. what kind of music? Is um, it? I think it says uh, it's a children's band. You know what I mean? It's live. I live. don't know. Children's reggae and acid rock. Right. <laughs> I mean, is it? It's like a sing along thing, I guess. Is it I would assume amplified? I would assume so. This is on the con? Mm -hmm. Didn't say Probably like they have at the farmer's market. Yeah, yeah. Like Jim Arms Farmer's No. Okay. Um, do we have a motion? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Second discussion. Um, I, I feel a little more comfortable. I mean, I'll, if we knew what kind of band it was and if it was going to be, I mean, the children's band, I, I get that part. It's going to be children playing instruments. But, uh, I know Jen spoke to Lynn. I don't, I'm not sure if she gave her the name of the Saturday, band or Saturday not. Saturday afternoon. My yes. guess is it's not children performing, but no, it's no, a professional, no, it's professional adults for children. performing yeah. children's music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how many people are in the band? Well, I, I think we can control the volume if we get a complaint. Um, the question is how to... How does that, it's I mean, if we stack in complaints, it's too loud. We can just have the police department direct them to turn it down, I think. I, I, I will say that in previous entertainment licenses, we haven't been very specific about who's performing, so we need to understand that. Well, I think it's, it's more of a policy issue that, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, I don't right. want to hammer these guys on. No, no, no we don't have, have it. So. But, it, it, you know, maybe well, we do we, need to ask for a more different. Why don't we see if it's forward. an issue when, and then if it comes up another time, those that remember it can bring yeah. it up. I think, I think common sense ought to prevail here. It's a, I, I, I suspect children. that it, uh, it, it, I, we're probably not going to find it's our greatest scoff in the nursery school. So it's <laughs> probably not Aerosmith, right? Well, <laughs> well <laughs> if it is, <laughs> who's going to complain? <laughs> Okay, so uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Mm -hmm. Supplement appropriations, fiscal 30th. The treasure collector have incurred more costs than was uh, anticipated doing due to uh, some more, more lockbox services that we've requested to make run things more smoothly. There's um, the first South Week West continuing disclosure that hadn't been budgeted for and van issuance costs. Uh, town council. Be before you get off, I just mm -hmm. get a question. What is, what what is the issuance cost on on a on? I take it this is one band as opposed to several. Yeah, it'll be the band that's going out for um, the uh, fire, the ambulance, and the uh, dump truck for the DPW. Okay, so the question is, what what is what is the issuance cost on that? I can't remember what it was, but I know there is band issuance. We have we pay. A no, no, you wouldn't. Fee. You pay a, you pay yeah. a fee on it. Yeah, I don't know how much the fee is. It's an estimate, and this could have been actually one we did last year. Okay. That well, they didn't bill us until this year, but I know it's. Could you could you pass along to Chris what what band issuance costs sure. are on a on a, if it's a, if it's based upon a, a principal value? Uh, maybe right. There would be a schedule. Mm -hmm. Uh, Thirty thousand is just an estimate based on what the past eight months have been. Police, it looks like what they've sent me for their personal services, along with the overtime. We do have a collective bargaining article that we sell money into transfer for their callers for the collective bargaining. Mm -hmm. uh, with that, along with this ten thousand, will probably be sufficient to cover their personal services. Uh, Shrek was obviously was more than we anticipated. This is what we're short. 
Sawyer, the chief, just gave me some more figures for his overtime because he's got two people out on uh, line of duty injuries. And along with the collective bargaining, hopefully this will cover it all. Snow and ice. Yikes. Yep. Is that the whole thing? That's the whole thing. Do we have anything coming in from the state? If it snows again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> We're all <laughs> just Mary. All in Florida. Mary, yes. is there any money coming from the state from to help augment the snow and ice? No, <laughs> but they are. What are they giving us money for? They're giving us money for, for helping potholes. 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 Yeah. yeah. That's supposed to help the snow and ice. Yeah. Well, that was because of the snow and ice, I guess. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Street lights, we're short. We estimate about 35,000. I think the budget was reduced for this year in anticipation of buying our own. Yeah, it's, um, and Chris, I know this has been a, uh, an ongoing conversation, but uh, is there, uh, do we is, have recourse? Is, is, is there light at the end of the tunnel? <laughs> uh, not on pump. Not, we don't yeah. pay this bill. <laughs> do we have recourse with National Grid uh, based upon uh, the anticipation of buying the lights? They gave us, they gave us a price, and in good faith, we agreed to buy them. And uh, it, it doesn't appear that they have any incentive to close the deal. You know, I did speak with Brian about this in the last two weeks. Have to be very honest with you. I'm, I'm drawing you blank as to why there, there were legitimate reasons. Well, there were there were laid out reasons for me as to what the delay was, um, and I I was under the impression that we were getting very close to finally getting this resolved. Part of it was that initially the town went to buy all the lights, and it was this issue that some of them didn't make economic sense to buy because they involved underground wiring. As it turned out, which was very expensive to maintain, so they would maintain a small number of lights in town. It was cost prohibitive for the town to. This is the first we've ever heard of it. Well, this is what I. Again, the problem is this went to town. This went forward, and then it turns out as as the details became, as it went into. I don't. I, this was approved last year. Right. Yes, it was. Uh, as it ground through, there were turned out to be more details than as I've been told and were presented up front. And so the deal would be restructured to, to take some of these other, some of the, a handful of these lights out because the expense of maintaining them was, would have wiped away a chunk of the savings. Uh, and they were, I guess they were amenable to that, believe it or not. Uh, and then there were a couple of other issues about updating the numbers about, I want, I want to be confident, <laughs> based on that, that the rest of the savings were actually real. Mm -hmm. So they, they did, they, because electricity prices have gone up and down, mm -hmm. um, and that was being done. Um, and then there was a question of how we would maintain them. The initial quotes came back higher than had been projected okay. because we're a we're not a market participant. We're, right. we're, we're, we're a small player, and there was an ex, uh, exploration of our neighbors whether or not we could either piggyback on one of their contracts or have them service us. And we, we couldn't work that out with Hingham because of the way they're set up. Um, and I honestly, off the top of my head, don't remember where we were on this. And again, there's been a, a host of other things that have been hotter on my agenda. Mm -hmm. um, I will most certainly have it for when we sit down again. I'll have a full update for you because I really want this to be closed. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I, I appreciate that. It just it, it's a. This is something that, believe it or not, has been kicking around this town for the better part of ten years. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And when it finally got executed last year, it was a, it was a hallelujah moment. Um, and the projected savings based upon the original analysis presented by National Grid and vetted by our own people, um, Brian would indicate that it was a two and a half year payoff. And right now, I look at this and say, that sucks up the savings that we were supposed to have received this year plus $10,000. And we're paying it out for what reason? And that's the question I have. You, you just answered a part of it, but it's all, that's, I don't know about anybody else here sitting at this table, but that's news to me. And I'm, um, I, I'm it's frustrating if, if, if I think once we get by town meeting, Chris can get right on top of it. No, 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 I know. I'm just, I'm, yeah. That's why I'm emphasizing. I just want to uh, all right, make go a note board. We have an executive session in 15 minutes, so I do want to okay. keep moving. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, well, I'll get you. Fair enough. Um, okay. Okay. I'm, and then. The money will come from, uh, did we get through everything? Well, unemployment. Unemployment's in the hall. We had yeah. more people. people. Townside? Townside. Yeah, the school pays their portion, and the town pays their portion, mm -hmm. and there were several people from Elder Affairs, mm -hmm. I believe, 
Okay. Here, isn't that typical? While I'm on this, I know this is a little, but do, do the schools usually in other communities? No. Okay. Usually, the, usually the town's responsible for unemployment. I, this is the first, well, of course, I've only really been in situation here, right. so, mm -hmm. but it was my understanding the school hadn't always paid their unemployment. Right. It switched right. over right. at some so, point. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I, think you, I think you'd have to look at a larger picture than yeah, yeah. but I, I do believe mostly it is town that It was, there was, as I recall, Steve, you might remember there was significant discussion of it, and yeah. that was the uh, resolution. And transfers. There's extra money in my finance personnel, because I never hired. A, the uh, help you need. <laughs> the help I need, because I'm not sure how permanent I want the help, or, you know, once I lost the person I did have, it was mm -hmm. fine. I, when I did my first go-arounds, I just couldn't find someone who would fit the bill. I didn't want to train someone and be unhappy. Right. So, like I did for this year, for 15s, I put some money in consulting as opposed to personal services. So if I do get an event bind, I can actually just hire an accountant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Someone with good. already the expertise right. needing to train. Um, treasure collector had extra money because the deputy treasure collector was hired later mm -hmm. in the year. And Paul had started mm -hmm. at a lower rate. South Shore Bow Tech, the assessment came in less than budgeted. Transfer station, it's actually transfer station personnel, I believe, because they have someone that's out that we haven't replaced yet or hasn't come back to work yet. Debt service, we have extra because of the refunding we did last year. And county pension, the savings that we had on paying up front on July 1st. As good. opposed to making two installment mm -hmm. payments. So the net we'll need from stabilization fund is ninety nine thousand nine hundred and forty. Mm. Okay. Just based on this transfer to the stabilization fund, what would be assuming that the town meeting votes mm -hmm. a transfer, mm -hmm. what would be the balance after that? It would be a hundred thousand dollars higher than this now because we're gonna transfer two hundred thousand dollars in. So we'll take about 100000 out. So $2 million and change, I think. Is that about? Balance. Yeah, yeah, it's sorry. $2 million and change, yeah. though. It's, it's $2 million and change. Okay. So there's a fair amount of money in there. Mm -hmm. And the stabilization is for, you know, the extraordinary unforeseen, which is snow and ice. Now remember, this is this is our interim step. No, no. We hope there'll still be savings between now and the end. No, no, I, I understand. Yeah, I mean, and any of these transfers go back into, you know, yeah. all into free cash. If it's, look at it. look at it. it's, it's snow and ice. Yeah, that's really what it is. In fact, we're, we're actually not even going all the way up to that number at this point. Right. Right. Okay. So this could change a little bit between now and then? I don't or think it's going to change before Monday because we're going to we're writing the motions and I don't think we're going to. Yeah. Okay. We've got as far as. We still as have as main June yeah. and line item transfers, transfers and there's still yeah. some reserve five. funding. Article 5. Right. Do we want to vote now? Motion. Okay. Do you have a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Five to zero. Thank you. Yeah, yes, I'm going to email it to Peter now. Okay. Let's get to what you can do. Town manager update. Um, town meeting is on Monday. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're, all we're all still alive. Yeah. So, happy, uh, happy Patriots Day. So. <laughs> oh yeah. Selecting comments. Who wants to go? Mm -hmm. I just have a question. Yeah. Um, did, did, do you have any updates from or after talking with Carl with regard to the schedule for uh, road resurfacing? Yes. I, in fact, I do, and I will be able to share it with you. I'll send you an email. I did get it today. For, I got it from Brian. So I'll, I'll, I know all yeah. of you. I'll send yeah. it to all of you. Yeah, yeah there, there's a list of r road repairs that are now scheduled for the spring. I would like to. Yeah, and no, I'll send it to all of you. Oh, yeah, good. I have it. Mm -hmm. I Thank believe, you. well, I won't give you names because I don't want to spend on no, the road and turn out that it was wrong. <laughs> so. I, I, I did but Brian sent me a list. So. So I'm going to some meeting of engineering or something in connection to the Public Works Committee that I'm involved in at the RMA. So that's next week and the week after. It's two weeks. So I'll report when it's all done. Excellent. Okay. Chris, um, could you, would you mind sharing that with the mayor? When oh, yeah, after absolutely. Sent it yeah, out? yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll, when I have a better schedule, I'll make sure you have it too. Mm -hmm. so we want people to know. Mm -hmm. you know. 
Um, I spoke to Chris about this earlier today. There has been some um, concerns raised by some of the residents on Clay Spring Road in regard to the speed of vehicles coming down off reservoir and going you know, along Clay Spring. There's a very significant number. There are 12 in the first three houses, <laughs> three or four houses, um, of children that are not yet teenagers. And it's a road that children walk on going to and from school. There are a lot of younger children on the adjacent streets also. So while um, Chris and, and perhaps the uh, police chief are working on a resolution of this issue, uh, for I'd like to ask the residents who routinely drive that area if they could just be a little more aware of where their speedometer is as they're coming down off that hill. And every other street in town. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I live on the highway. Yeah. Can I just, yeah. I just want to take a minute and yeah. read the names of everyone who participated in the Boston Marathon sure, yesterday yeah, from yeah. Cohasset. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's <coughs> obviously just a, an amazing event, and yesterday was an amazing day for the city of Boston and the Boston Marathon. And, um, so Melissa Barrett and Joanne Clark participated in the um, BAA Half Marathon. And then um, marathon runners and finishers included Craig Coffey, Beth Corey, Eric Cruz, Aileen Darcy, Tracy Dunn, Jennifer Gallagher, Megan Gaston, Gabriel Gomez, Maggie Healy, Charlie Henry, my husband Patrick Kennedy, Richard Kennedy, Megan Leahy, Vaughn Littlejohn, Mark Maggi, Shelly Mahoney, Angela O'Brien, Paula Leary, Maura Jane Rogers, Karen Ryan, Mark Ryan, and Michael Savage. Um, they all finished. They all did amazingly well. It was a phenomenal day. Great. Very nice. Congratulations. So, and there were two um, under three hour finishers. Wow. Uh, Mark Magi, who finished, I think, 245. He's I was looking through the list. Amazing. Today. And my old husband, <laughs> <laughs> who did 258, which is pretty wow. impressive. He just has to do skiing in between. That's all. Wow. So, anyway. yeah. Good day. <laughs> let, let me just Very add Cameron good. Nugent, who was uh, in the playgroup with my daughter and grew up together in Colossus. She finished also. But yeah. she doesn't live in town. Not right, right now. That's right. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, how did I get some? Former Cohasset resident. <laughs> thought I did my research. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I don't have anything. Uh, so, Selectman's correspondence. Uh, we just get a letter from Charlie Humphreys related to the Red Lion Inn. Um, they're asking to come in front of us and discuss outdoor weddings. I wonder if we should refer this to town council or just get an yeah, opinion I think on. It's a idea. I think I'll probably I, yeah. I thought yeah. he was going to work with town council. Well, either way, I think can we move this over to him to see what his opinion is? Thank you. We are going to have them on uh, later agenda soon because that's yes. like their GM. Yeah. 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 Okay. I don't want to put it off. I'd like to know nope. what they're you know and, where we stand. And, and also, we have the health fair. M I A. Maya. Employees. Yeah. Employees. So that's May eighth at mm -hmm. Town Hall, twelve thirty p.m. to two p.m. and then two thirty p.m. to four p.m. at the Middle High School. So this will be a place we can look at all your health offerings, health insurance offerings for town employees. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's great, Chris. Thanks for putting that together. Actually, give all, all the credit to that to Sammy Parnell, who's really done all that work. She's, a, <laughs> she's done a great, great job on that. So. Okay, minutes. April 7th. Do you have a motion? I move. Do you have a second? Second. Any changes? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 5 0. April 15th. Do have a motion? No move. Do have a second? Second. Discussion? Mm -hmm. Hold on, okay. I didn't see anything, but that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean anything. I didn't see anything. No. Okay, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Five zero. Next Board of Selectmen's meetings are the 22nd. That's today. That's today, That's yeah. Today. yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. We're posting on <laughs> Groundhog Day. 28th, <laughs> the 29th. So we're posted for both the town meeting and the next night. 
um, whether we're at town meeting or not, we may have a short meeting here. So it was for 6.30 for the 28th? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Six for the 29th. Just in case we have 6.30 for both nights? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Well, we do have some articles, so we'll have to vote them. Yeah. So mm -hmm. half an hour should be enough yeah. to deal with it. Yeah. Okay. And then the 6th. And um, what day is the 12th on? That's a Monday, because mm -hmm. you historically do not meet the yeah, second, second Tuesday. Yeah, I don't know time. if you want to set a meeting at this point, or you want. To well, wait. I think at this, we can discuss it on the sixth a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the sixth, we do have uh, at least one hearing scheduled. That's the red line yeah. change of uh, yeah. manager. Yeah. Change of okay. manager. Yeah. Just new manager. Yeah. Okay. Um, topics not recently anticipated by the chairman. Forty-eight hours in advance. I don't have anything. I'm in here. Yes. Did you reasonably anticipate, Agnes McCann, 104 Dome Street, yeah. that all of the trees you saw pictures of on Dome Street last week were removed the next day and the stumps ground <laughs> down? <laughs> no, no, I didn't. No, that's <laughs> and great. And they're coming in to grind the stumps. Wow. Excellent. They're Excellent. The next day. Who did that? Thank you. I guess Chris did. Well, I, I, again, I, I don't, I physically don't do any of this. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> wonderful town staff does all this. Pretty good deal, dude. Nice, nice job. Yeah, I know. It's, it's yeah. nice to good get to the be credit. Good <laughs> But all of the credit on this uh, really does go to Carl and to Brian and Dunham, who really, really yeah. worked very hard to get that taken care of. And the chief still in the first place, we're working very closely. I thought people grid, should know. So, yeah. but thank you. It's nice to hear people say nice things about all the work the town staff does. There was one thing that it did come up. I just want to make sure that we um, refer over the bylaws to the bylaws committee to just look at the language on the um, grammar. Well, yeah, Agnes right. happens to be on that committee. Who else is on that committee, oh, Agnes? I think it's Jack. just me and Jackie at this point, don't we, sir? Yeah. So we if you and Jackie could just take a glance at everything and let us know. Okay. I mean, the, the proposed ones? The stuff in the warrant, yeah. Okay. What yeah. if they found changes? We'd make well, it on town floor. Okay. Yeah. They're probably, it's probably perfect. Um, oh, I would like to say that um, I received a number of very positive comments about your message, Chris, um, that you had in the front of the world. It was short and simple. Sweet. Short, yeah, and simple. short and simple. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was the, the tone of it and everything was very much appreciated by many people. Thank you. It's not a whole lot you could say after 90 days. <laughs> <laughs> you mean we'll be looking at three or four pages yeah. next year? But no, 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 no. But 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 genuinely, I have to say that it really has been a great pleasure. I mean, it, this nothing gets done here without an incredible amount of participation from the citizens, mm -hmm. and uh, it's really been really a great sense of uh, satisfaction for me to be able to do that. I mean, to really engage like that. I mean, you know, it has its moments, um, <laughs> but uh, but no, it really has been great, and I really do. It's one of the things that, that really makes this job uh, fun, genuinely. So. Absolutely. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, before we adjourn, I just have a great announcement that uh, U.S. News World and Reports has announced Cohasset is number 13th in Massachusetts in the high school. Great. Wow. Overall? Nice. Yep. Really? So wow. Based That's on, great. Um, I think it's, what is it, teach, student teacher ratio and then some of the. College um, readiness, math, and English. Math and yeah. English, right? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Congratulations. Lesson Latin is yeah. number one. Yeah. So congratulations to the school system. That's great news. Very good news. Okay, um, we're, we're going to go um, into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation. If discussed in open, open meeting, may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the town. And uh, we need to take a roll call vote, and then we're going to go into executive, and we're going to come out in open session in order to adjourn. Okay? Steve? Aye. Diane? Aye. Fred? Aye. Karen? Aye. Martha? Aye. Was there, was there a motion? Good point. Thank you, Martha. Who would like to second that? So, okay. Steve? Deja vu. Aye. Aye. Diane. Fred, aye. Karen, aye. Aye. Thank you. It's over.